And on the eighth day, God said, let there be polyfilter. Now, here we are in COVID days. COVID days means I don't get to get to my jobs very often due to everything changing every two seconds. But I get the fun job today of cleaning this tank. I haven't been here for a while, so this will be a fun job to do. Um, we've got a massive lion head down there. Absolutely beautiful fish. Judging by the size of its little lump, it's probably a massive female. Actually a monstrous female, because a male would have a huge lump being such a big fish. Such an amazing fish with a lot of personality. Almost reminds me of a bloody freshwater jawfish. Now, there is a massive catfish in here. Monsters. I've oh, got reflections everywhere. Let's see if we can see him properly. That is a big fish. Actually, I was told to take these fish out at one stage. Now, there is some beautiful cichlids in here. Some lovely electric yellows, some cobalt blues, some firemouth, some peacocks, some silver dollars. And that's actually quite a lot of fish. Oh, there's also a big rostratus in here. So considering the little maintenance this tank has had just due to COVID and not being able to get here and the whole world falling apart, um, this tank has had a few fish go missing and unfortunately that's sort of what happens because what happens with an aquarium is there is a certain biological capacity that the aquarium is capable of. And what happens is over time, that biological capacity is reached. And then Mother Nature says, hey, time to kill a couple of fish, because that's how balance occurs. So as the fish grow, particularly with big monster catfish like that in here, um, the biological capacity of the tank becomes reached. Um, some of these fish are also a little bit skinny. See the belly there? We really want to fatten them up a little bit. And sometimes fish won't put on weight if the pheromone and phenol counts or the accumulants are starting to build up. Because this tank hasn't had a water change for some time. In a perfect world, this tank would really be getting water changes every two to four weeks. And that would help to defuse down some of the accumulants. Now, because that has not happened, the accumulants are going to be increased which means Mother Nature says, you are only allowed this many fish. And the thing is, it's disproportionate as the fish grow. As the fish get bigger and bigger, they produce more and more waste, they produce more accumulants, and they're less efficient. So therefore, you can have less of them. So big fish equals less fish. More water changes, more maintenance equals more fish. Obviously, we can see this peacock's being very aggressive to this Rostratus, chasing him around left, right, and center. So we really need to get rid of this Rostratus, I think, or get rid of the peacock, because this Rostratus' life is hell. And if we allow this to continue, then eventually this Rostratus is gonna die. And it doesn't die necessarily from physical injury. It dies more from exhaustion and stress. And if animals are stressed, their immune system just goes down and down and down and down and down until they die. So there's two whopping big catfish in there. So I think today I'll need to take those two catfish out and I'll take out this Rostratus and that will give the tank a little bit more biological capacity and that will allow us to get some more pretty fish because though those catfish are so big, I can't even see them because the tank's so dark. Now this tank has very fancy lights and the lights are all preset. So that's not something I could be bothered dealing with because if I want to set it, I've got to set it. Whereas I'll just um, do a clean and those lights will come on when it suits them. So the long and short of this tank is I'm going to give it a good service and I'm going to try and get back here more regularly to service it. And I'm going to reduce the bio load and then no more fish should go missing. If I do not do this, then slowly more fish will die. 
Um, some of the fish are skinny, that may be that they're not fed enough. So increasing the food will also increase the bio load, which means also increase the chance of others dying due to too many fish being in the tank. So we'll reduce the bio load, we'll start cleaning it more regularly, and we'll get this tank back on track because this tank has slipped between the cracks thanks to bloody COVID. Blame everything for COVID these days. Now, if you've got fancy benches, it's really worth getting one of these JBL test kits because not only do they look cool, but it means that you can contain all of your crap and mess because a lot of these chemicals will actually stain fancy benches. So if you go doing your tests on fancy benches, get ready to drip a bit, drop a bit here and there, which might even wreck your bench. And that's not as fun as you'd think. Whereas if you have this test kit, you can keep all your drips and drabs. You can get your test kit sample, put it there, do all your testing and any little dribbles or drabs or whatever can all be totally contained within this that you can just wipe up and bob's your uncle a really simple little trick that um can definitely stop it from your fish tank ending in tears now why do fish go missing from your aquarium now there can be a whole host of reasons why fish go missing from an aquarium they can die and the other fish eat them they can get stuck in the back of the aquarium where they can be an anoxic zone where they can get dissolved very quickly by anoxic bacteria. And there can be um, weirs that the fish can jump in and decompose. They can jump out and your cat can eat them or they can get stolen by fish thieves that break into your house at night and steal your fish. Other times fish can get stuck in your filters and other times they can jump right out of your aquarium and end up in all sorts of strange places like under your lounge and so forth. It's unbelievable the places that you can find fish that have jumped out. Sometimes when you move your tank, you end up finding him down there. You could even find him under there or God knows under there. I've seen it all and I believe it all now. Now testing the water of this tank, the pH is about 8.2. The ammonia was pretty much zero. Now I got a very high nitrite reading and whenever that happens, you wanna retest because half the time when you get a level that you don't expect, it normally just means that you've got a dirty test tube or something went wrong with the test. So I've retested it. I need to give this a little bit more time, but it would appear that there's a tiny little bit of nitrite in the water. That one is a wrong test. Um, there is hardly any nitrate in the water. And the KH was about eight, which is good. And the GH was about 12, which is good. So the only concern for this tank in which I can test is little tiny bit of nitrite which um may just be a result of not being maintained for a little while thanks to covid now give me your vote should i keep working or spend the rest of the day sitting in this massage chair very tempting i bet you there's beer in the fridge <laughs> so now it's time to clean the glass Very difficult. Now, if you have plastic plants, not live plants, you have a few options for cleaning them up. One is just turn the lights off for a few weeks or keep the lights at near nothing for a few weeks and the algae will die off and the plants will seem to clean up. The other option is to throw the plants out in the sun, leave them there for a day or so, turn them upside down, leave them there for a day or so, hit them with a hose and throw them back in and they normally look good as new. The, the plastic plants will definitely have a shelf life and eventually they'll just look raggedy and crap. So eventually you want to chuck them out and replace them. That one there is pretty due for a replace. A good old tank rearrange and chuck some new plants in and Bob's your uncle. It's like you've got a whole new fish tank. Something you want to do on a semi-regular basis 
Also adding more catfish will tend to help keep the plants a little bit cleaner as well. Not to mention high quality foods which tend to produce less waste and therefore less accumulated algae tends to occur. Now it's really important that you understand that that area there is the sump. That's the area where the water is going to go down. So you never want to let your heater be in the sump because if the water goes down, the heater gets exposed, then kaboomba, we've got a problem. So we always want to make sure the heater is in an area that is not subject to evaporation. So we need to have the heater somewhere with a fixed water level because we don't want that going down and exposing the heater. So that's a no-no place for the heater. That's a yes-yes place for the heater. Just something to bear in mind. Now my next job is the most important thing of a water change, which is a gravel clean. The way we do it, use the gravel clean is we're gonna push this little device into the gravel. The gravel's gonna spin around and pull all the crap out of the gravel. Now considering this tank hasn't been cleaned for a while, this gravel is surprisingly clean. Now that can mean two things. It can mean very good quality food, which is not producing a lot of waste. And it can also mean the fish are not being fed enough. Now on the basis, the fish do look a little bit skinny. That is a suspicion, but I do believe this tank's getting very good food. Right now I can't even actually see any food in, the, in here. So that worries me a little bit. So I don't know where they're hiding the food at the moment but I do need these fish to be fed a bit more because I've got some skinny binnies in here. It's important to keep an eye on your fish. We don't want to see these sunken bellies. We don't want to see fat bellies either, but we don't want to see, we don't want to see high cast fish. So keep an eye on your fish bellies and keep an eye on your gravel because if your gravel comes out too clean, it can mean you're not feeding enough. If you're ever in doubt about that, bring a sample of water down to the shop. We can check on that and we can do a, um, check the video, bring us a little video and we can look at your fish. And if we see these sunken bellies, then we can uh, advise that you feed a bit more. Now the color of the water that you siphon out of the aquarium during a water change using a gravel cleaner gives you a few indicators with the tank. So at the moment I am pulling plenty of crap out, so I am happy about that. But at the same time, if it's too dirty, you really need to be doing this process more often or using cleaner foods. And if it's um, too clean, you probably need to be feeding a little bit more or maybe you don't need to do quite as much maintenance as you've been doing, which is a rare problem. Now doing a water change on a freshwater tank, the water from your fish tank is full of all these wonderful nutrients. It's Awesome for your garden and your lawn. Just don't do that if you've got a saltwater tank or it's a great way to kill your lawn or your garden. Now the key to transporting fish is to put them in a very low amount of water because you want it so when they swim they're actually going to agitate the surface of the water, oxygenating the water. Don't put them in a deep amount of water otherwise their oxygen level will raise, fall and your fish will quickly suffocate. So they're only going to be in here for a short period of time until I take them to the shop. So I only want to have a very shallow amount of water in here. And it's unbelievable how hard it is to catch black fish out of a black aquarium. You literally have to pull everything out. You can't even see the damn things, especially with the amount of reflection. Especially in such a tall tank. Such a simple thing, so much fun. <laughs> Now, when you're pulling tanks apart, you get to find fun things like fish that you forgot you even had. It's amazing how some fish can hide in the tank and you can literally not see them for weeks or even months. And then when you pull the tank apart, bingo, there he is back again. Now, any time that you're pulling your tank apart and your pulling the rocks out it's really worth making sure there's a little bit of water in the bottom of the bucket because I can't tell you how often you end up with a little buddy like a little fish like this fella or a little catfish that ends up falling out of the decorations and that little bit of water is just enough to keep him alive 
so he can safely deliver him back to the fish tank so he doesn't dry out and die. Simple little trick. Now, because these guys are a little bit skinny, um, adding a bit of Vugal is a really good thing. Vugal is an artificial immune booster. So, um, had a bit of that in the cupboard, throw it in the fish tank, stimulate the fish's immune system. Very good idea. In all the water that we're putting back into the aquarium, it's very important that water ager is used to make sure that the chlorine and so forth is removed from the water. Otherwise, we might be looking at some dead fish. During a water change, a bit of good bacteria never hurts if you got it. Best to keep it in the fridge though, it tends to last longer. Now, the other thing you don't want to forget to do every now and then is chuck a siphon pipe down the weir here because the amount of crap that can build up at the bottom of this weir can be enough to make you sick. Chuck your siphon down, suck it all out. Have fun with that. When you finish your products, make sure you chuck them out because so often the fish tank cupboard is just full of empty bottles and that tricks you because you think you've got all these products in stock for you to use in your tank, but you don't. You've got a bunch of empty bottles. Now, if you need to fatten your fish up, you definitely don't want to go from one extreme to the other. So you want to make sure you use good quality food, just like this probiotics. I'd like a bit of Danichi as well. And you don't want to go silly with it. You want to just feed more than you did. And you want to just allow about a month, six weeks to slowly fatten your fish back up again. You don't want to go silly and start overfeeding the crap out of them, particularly in this case where the tank needs a little bit of extra maintenance anyway, thanks to COVID. We just want to slowly increase the amount of food that we're feeding so the system can absorb the increased nutrients and we don't end up with higher nitrite levels and create other problems. In general, overfeeding is a faster and more prevalent problem than underfeeding. Underfeeding is a very slow deterioration, which I do not encourage, but I definitely don't want to go from one situation to another. You just want to slowly up the food. In general, I'll feed the fish what they eat in 30 seconds, five times a week. I'll watch their bellies. Their bellies are a bit skinny. I'll feed a bit more. And you can feed a small amount more often, or you can feed a small amount um, or a larger amount at a time. Either way, it's got to be incremental increases. Polyfilter. 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 How many times can I say polyfilter per video? Polyfilter. 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 Now what you definitely want to do with your fish tank is make sure all of your cords are labelled because it's such a pain in the ass when you're trying to follow a big matted mess of cords, trying to figure out which one's the bloody pump, which is the filter, which one have I turned on, which one have I turned off. I need the light bloody great too, look at this. Lights up and everything. So let's go, good bump. There's my water pump, hey, look at that, it's back on. I haven't had to follow a stupid big mess of cords to figure that out. And then I can go, hey, look at that, my heater's off. And turn that back on. My heater's off, oh, look at that, I can turn that back on. Look how easy that was. So simple, all labeled, all neat. Ah, so nice. So I've just done a real big tank clean on this tank, which was way overdue for a service. But what I'm not gonna do is do a real big filter clean because it's much better to do them separately because I wanna stabilize the bacteria and not shock everything too much. So if I come back in the next few weeks, give the tank another bit of a water change, and this time do a bit more of an overhaul on the filter. It's going to be a lot safer than the, for the fish than trying to do the whole lot at once. Minimising shock. Also, reducing the amount of time that I'm spending on these services that, if not done regularly, can take a lot longer than you hope. When you're servicing at someone's house, it's really important to make sure you keep the door shut. Because it's not as fun as you think when their bloody cats or dogs run out 
Got to go chasing them around the street, get little bastards back in. Pro tip. Three hours later.